Hello everyone, and today I'll be reading A Cat's Cakes Listener by me. So let's get into it. Katsuki was always certain that no one would be able to measure up to him. That was something that always made him confident. A little bit too much, might you say? Because he was someone who could be insufferable to work with and to even witness as a classmate. A lot of your friends have complained. A lot of his friends have been complaining. He's not easy to get along with at all. And to be honest, a year ago, you might have never even imagined yourself talking to him. Much less dating him as you are right now. The two of you were close. Sweethearts. Lovers. And you could not imagine Katsuki doing anything bad to you. But a part of you was always insecure. Of those thoughts that you had in your head. Your thoughts that were meaner than anyone could ever be to you. Your thoughts that would always hurt you. And always remind you of how worthless you think you are. Of what you think of yourself. Of how lowly you see yourself as. How you don't see yourself as deserving of his love. Of his attention. No matter what you do. No matter how much you try, you feel like you'll never catch up to him. Not that you've ever wanted to write him or something, but you feel so worthless sometimes whenever you're compared to him. After all, you're supposed to be something. You're supposed to be a power couple of sorts. This is what people always thought of you. But whenever you compared yourself to him, Within your mind, you could always tell. Katsuki was meant for greatness, and you were not. And what people saw now, soon they would not see. As the gap between you and Katsuki widened, as you continued to grow, and you would only hold him behind. And soon, he would no longer be blind as well, and he would see how truly worthless you are. Those thoughts plagued your mind constantly, because you knew him, you knew Katsuki, how he would never want someone as weak as you are as his partner, how the sooner he realizes that, the sooner he's leaving you, the sooner you'll be alone, all alone with no one to care for you at all. It hurts you more than anything else in the world, how doomed you are. And how you feel like there is nothing you could do about it. Because maybe there isn't. Maybe you're just doomed to see this happen and play out. While knowing you can only grieve what you could have had. You can mourn. But you cannot change the world. Your fate or your quirk. No matter how hard you work and how hard you try. You will never be able to catch up. And that's when Cat's Kid walked in on you, in your room, crying as you called yourself names, screaming into your pillow, and he was rather stunned, to say the least. He stood in front of the door for a couple of moments, as if trying to understand and compose himself, because it certainly seemed like you were not at your best moment, and he was probably needed for help. Whatever problem was going on, surely could not be that serious, right? Or so he hoped. He desperately did. He didn't want things to be so bad. He hoped they would not be. Because all he wanted for you was love. He didn't see himself as someone who could be so sappy. And yet, here he was. Doing that. For you. It was embarrassing. It was so unlike him. It was so uncharacteristic. But seeing you like this had destroyed his heart. Wyon, talk to me. What the hell's going on here? You shook your head. Looking at him, I'm fine, Katsuki. Perfectly fine. There is nothing for you to worry about. There clearly is. Have you looked at yourself? Really, Ion, you think I would not notice? 
that I'm stupid? Or that you can just fool me around with a word or two? Katsuki, I promise I'm fine. I was just... I was just having... A breakdown of sorts? It doesn't really matter. I'm telling you, I'm already over it. I don't need this. I don't need your concern or your attention right now. I'm perfectly fine and perfectly capable of taking care of myself. I am just... I heard it all, you know. I heard you. You called yourself worthless for God's sake. What the hell are you even talking about? You're not worthless or weak or any of those damn words I heard. I don't see how you can call yourself that. You don't make sense at all to me, Oyan. You stilled, frozen in place. He had only locked in on you when you were crying into your pillow. Had he been standing outside then? Had he heard it all? Was he going to see you for who you truly were? You already felt vulnerable as is, for him to see you in the state. But for him to know much more than you were comfortable with, it scared you and terrified you to no end. You felt yourself start to tremble, the tears rising up again. When Katsuki wrapped his arms around you, something you did not expect from him, something you never really thought you wanted or needed, until you had it now. You let yourself cry into his arms, as he held you tighter, protective, even though no one was hurting you, but yourself. Damn you, and those stupid damn thoughts in your brain. Perhaps you should stop thinking then, if you're so stupid. You're strong. I know you are. There's no reason fooling yourself and trying to think that you aren't. And even if you're not as strong as I am, which I know is pretty difficult, I still love you anyway. Your mind is strong, Wyan. And whatever thoughts you're having, I'm telling you now, they're pretty wrong. And I'm gonna show you. What do you mean, Katsuki? You say, your voice hoarse from crying, as he held you closer. I'll fight those damn thoughts if I have to, he said. And you chuckled. He tried to hide in the mood. He really did. And you could tell. And you found yourself laughing, shaking your head. Somehow I don't doubt it. You could find a way to fight anything, Katsuki. He smiled, kissing your forehead. I'm glad you know. Now you don't know me for being a liar or being biased. So when I say you're strong, I mean you're already damn strong. No need to cry about it. No need to think otherwise. If you can't think clearly, then trust in my judgment. All right. And after a moment of hesitation, he cupped your face and made you look into his eyes. And you saw nothing but clear love and determination in those red eyes of his. And you knew that you were no longer alone in the struggle. You would no longer have to cry, knowing that no one would be by your side. Because now he knew. And now... He would be here for you, unlike what you thought at all. So he nodded, laughing softly as he hugged you close. You were still struggling, of course, and you would still be insecure, maybe for a long time to come. But you would no longer be alone, and that was worth more than a hundred words, because you know that whenever you're down, he would have your back when you needed it most.